haven't gotten a, a distinct timetable on, on Lev Shinoff. I'm mm -hmm. just wondering if there actually is one. Yeah, uh, so I'll just, him and Brassois are about the same. They're probably another four weeks with already being on the, you know, give or take, but already being on the closer to four or maybe a bit more, and then uh, Brassois maybe a bit less. With, with Lepshinov, I'm sure mm -hmm. he was needing to get this going yeah. and everything like that. So, I mean, is it just one of those things, tell him to practice patience and, and we'll see you when you're ready to go? Yeah, and, it, you know, he's he's around the facility, you know, we kind of have to kick him out most <laughs> days. And, um, but yeah, he's super eager to go. He, he'll probably start skating fairly soon. Maybe, hope you know, if everything goes well with his next visit in the next seven days, he okay. can start skating at least. Um, so I think he'll be looking forward to that, but yeah, I think he's pretty disappointed, but um, he's able to do a lot of other training, so it's not like he's just sitting around sedentary doing nothing. So, um, but yeah, I'm sure he's anxious to get going. With the left shot, did it happen that uh, he blocked a shot in like a skate or, or, or um, yeah, in an informal skate or how did it? Yeah, I, I, I think he was training down in Florida maybe and, and took a shot and um, yeah, so it just happened then. I think he tried to push through, and then by the time he, he mentioned it and we started taking a look at it, you know, it was time to kind of shut him down for a bit. For a Ross, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that was training too. Yeah, the, yeah, I think just getting going on the ice and felt something. So, so that wasn't it. Didn't linger from like the offseason. No, 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 no. no that right. was that was a new report there. Yeah. yeah. It, what is the plan for the backup goalie spot until he's ready? Will, will Arvid probably do that? Or? Um, yeah, I think we'll see how camp goes. Uh, you know, Arvid's, he was here last year and, and kind of knows the rhythm of, of the season and, and how things go. And so um, maybe a good opportunity for him to get a little more time. But we'll, we'll, kind of, we'll see how Bressois does too, right? Um, you know, we'll, we'll see where he's at time, timeline wise. Um, and then if we need to, you know, carry a, another goalie, we can make the decision towards the end of camp, so. What's your out, outlook with uh, Reichel? It seems like, you know, with a uh, waiver situation, he's kind of confined to here, and then his role is kind of, you know, he's got to be in a certain spot, like not for the line. Mm -hmm. So, like, what's your, your thought um, and process for him this season? Yeah, it's... You know he he does need waivers now, but my expectation is that he competes hard for a, a top six spot, and, and you know we've got body, so he's going to have to earn that. Um, he's going to have to come in and take that you know role, and, and um, so it's it's on it's on him in a way. Uh, we don't want we don't want him playing on the fourth line or anything like that. So um, you know, but he's he's been around enough to know what the expectation is and and what the NHL requires uh, from a consistency standpoint. He's still a young player. Let, let's not, you know, we've, we've known him and he's been around for a little longer than some of the, the other younger players, but he is still young and so he's got to figure that out and find his way. And last year was obviously a bit of a, a speed bump for him. Um, uh, but we know he's what he's capable of and, and very confident he can come and be a, an impact player for us. And so, um, hopefully, over the next few weeks and months, he can he can prove that and, and take a spot. For a long time, he's telling us he put on a few pounds, gained some strength. What's the next step you hope to see from him this season? Yeah, I, I think he just has to round out his game. Right, he's another really young player um, that that you know had had some ups and downs in the NHL last year. Um, but you know, it's always nice to see that physical development. But finding that consistency game to game on both sides of the puck, um, finding some conf confidence offensively, it, it will be a key for him, but also figuring out how to defend uh, consistently at the NHL level is gonna be a, a big key for him this year. For a long time, this team couldn't develop defensemen into NHL caliber. It was Nicholas Jalmerson to Alex Vlasic almost. Um, now that you've seen that from Blessing, what's different about Rockford that you believe that it's the right place to develop guys like Levshinov, Kaiser, Del Mastro, Allen, all these guys you have in the system now? Yeah, it's it, a lot of credit goes to the personnel down there. I think uh, all the confidence in the world in Andre Sorensen and his staff, and then also Mark Eaton and our development staff. We've we um, we have a 
group of people there that, that are focused on these players, you know, basically 24-7 and, and how they're used both in practice and uh, in game situations to play to their strengths and make sure that they're always experiencing the things they need to experience and, and put in the situations that are going to help them grow. Uh, and, you know, I've been really, really happy with the growth that a lot of those players have made over the last couple of years. And um, whether it be, you know, Vlasic, I mean, you mentioned Tomas or Allen, guys <coughs> are going down there last year and um, showing some real progress after, you know, struggling a little bit towards the end of the, the first half with us and going down and coming back and really, you know, rebuilding his confidence and rebuilding his game to some extent to the point where he, he was a, a really, really strong player for uh, them, you know, in their push to the playoffs. And so, um, yeah, tons of confidence in, in sending players down there and, and knowing that they're they're going to become better. Do you think that could be beneficial for Korczynski if it comes to that at the end of camp? Potentially could be. Uh, yeah, like we'll we'll figure that out and see what what needs to what needs to happen with you know for the best situation for his development. Um, but we'll let we'll let the players decide uh, you know where where they should be and and we'll go from there. But again, Rockford is a, a massive tool uh, in our arsenal to to help these players get better and make sure that they're they're heading on the right path. Uh, you know, from a long term standpoint. After last season, you mentioned just there might be different ways that the, the, this year, especially having I mean, the roster, and, and everything was kind of general in terms of the first couple years, kind of development and where you guys were. What, what, how do you look at it? I guess, from your perspective, how you guys will assess in this season's approach? Yeah, you know, I think there's, it's, it's a di definitely a different makeup in camp this year, and so, um, you know, you're just the main thing we're looking for is is better execution in in you know our. our systems in our gameplay obviously there's some results based uh growth that we'd like to see um but you know what like the i thought the start of camp has been excellent um uh you know making sure that we're we're gonna get off on the right foot i like the adjustment he's made with getting off uh you know with more intensity through 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 the scrimmages and, and harder practices and um, so, you know, it, it's, it's something that'll be constantly ongoing. There's a lot of nuance to how that evaluation will, will unfold given, you know, what the, what the team looks like, you know, hopefully no, uh, no injury situations, you know, to the extent we experienced last year that we have to deal with. Um, but I, I think it's just a, an ongoing execution from a team and system standpoint that, that we'll be looking at. In that the last couple of years, you guys have traveled so much, and knowing that you guys are going to have such a high pick, does that does that change at all this year? I guess is there more, I guess, presence here for you and your staff, or just assessing this rather than maybe being on the road as much? Or? Um, I think in the past the balance has has been to not miss too much NHL um, games, or specifically our games. Uh, the draft is still so important to the long term uh, health and and longevity of what we're trying to build and so that's I think that's always going to be part of my um, my my travel plans is, is getting out and seeing top draft prospects and and um, that level of hockey that amateur hockey but um, you know we've got great confidence in Mike Donahue and his group but it is also nice to get your own eyes on on things and um, have a good feel for the draft so it's something that's going to continue uh, I I enjoy it it also happens to be a very very important part of um, building and sustaining something successful so uh, you know maybe a bit less maybe a bit more targeted in in um, in the approach but uh, still gonna be very involved yesterday uh, Seth Jones was talking about guys knowing the small details of their role the requirements of their role is a another step toward success. Uh, is that uh, something that you'll have more of an eye for this season? Now that you have more of a better laden roster, um, I don't know if we'll have a more of an eye for it. I, I believe that we sort of had an eye when we were signing people in the summer. Um, you know, I, I think there was a, there were a lot of situations last year where. We had players playing in third and fourth line roles that maybe that doesn't fit their skill set. 
Um, and uh, I'm lights out. <laughs> that was a boring answer, I guess. Um, you know, it, it's. It, I don't. I'm not sure if that's what Seth was referring to, but um, you know, in terms of players being in the right roles, I, I'm hoping that uh, our the the depth that we acquired through uh, our summer activity does give us the opportunity to play players in situations that play to their strengths and their, if you call it, their roles. Um, and so hopefully we've done that and, and it'll make evaluation a little easier um, if, if we're evaluating them against the role that they're best suited for. It feels like you have... Also, I'm sorry, I okay. just want to follow. He was also talking about embracing it from a mental standpoint. Like it may not be flashy or sexy, mm -hmm. but it's something that will be a component toward the overall team success, which he feels like it didn't always have in the past. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think, you know, when any any good team or any successful team has has players that uh, embrace and fit uh, their roles in the team and, and they, they do them very well. And so I think if you have everyone playing a role that fits their skill set and, and, and they can play to that identity and know what their job is and execute on it, then in theory it should... Uh, be better for the group. Doing the roster math, it seems like there might be one or two more NHL forwards that can then can reasonably fit. Did you make any assurances to these guys that they would be playing every day? Are some of them prepared to maybe be scratched? Could there be moves made before the season starts? It, it's pretty crowded up front right now. Yeah, it, uh, no assurances or anything made. You know, that's that's for the players to decide on the ice who's going to be in that uh, that forward group or. The, Defense group, for that matter. Um, yeah. Other than that, it's open competition. Uh, we made it, you know, the players aware at, at opening uh, uh, the opening meeting that we signed and brought in a lot of new faces, and that was done for a purpose. That this team shouldn't be an easy one to make, or, or an easy one to hold your job in. So it, it's there's a demand on the players to get going right from day one, uh, and then maintain a consistent. Uh, level of play to make sure that you know they hold their spot in the lineup and and uh, you know that internal competition I believe is healthy for for driving the collective forward. How much are you looking forward to Connor's growth going into year two and having a much quieter summer to train and prepare for it rather than last summer where it was chaotic? I'm sure. Yeah, you know that'll be I'm sure that'll be a a nice thing for him to you know one have a, a full off season where. Um, you know, he was just training and focusing on, on getting ready for the season. But there's also comfort in entering on your second camp where you know what you're walking into. Uh, you've, you've been around the facility. You know what training camp is like. There's a lot fewer questions that he'll be wondering or, or having to answer moving into the year. And, um, you know, probably now that he's coming into his second year, a lot less uh, of that Kind of hoopla he had to go through on that initial road trip right um that's it's not just call it what it is it's not normal what he had to go through last year uh and so um, i'm sure there's comfort in knowing that he's he knows what he's getting into with the nhl he knows the level of play he's been through a year and, and um just much more relaxed i'm sure coming into his, his second camp so excited to see um how he does he it's, it's so early and we always you know as soon as there's hockey on the ice, you want to start evaluating, and it's it's you know it's day. We're not even through day two, but uh, just watching him in the skates, I think he looks fantastic. So excited to see um, how he does as we start the season and, and he enters year two. What de what development are you hoping to see from him this year? Obviously, the bar is so much higher than a lot of the prospects we're typically asking about. That there's also still ways he can develop. What what are you hoping to see from him? Yeah, I think it's just growing that 200-foot game, and um, I'm sure from his standpoint, he probably wants to up his offensive output as well. But um, you know, I, I'm excited to see him with with some new line mates, uh, and and you know, really taking that step of now that he understands the league and, um, and and being able to impact the game on both sides of the puck, and also um, you know, give us a few more memorable moments on the offensive side of things. With Taylor Hall, Luke was saying yesterday that he was already setting the pace. And just how much are you looking forward to seeing what he can do after, you know, mm -hmm. 
basically a season loss last right. year. Yeah, just speaking with Taylor um, over the summer, you can you can just feel the energy and feel the excitement of getting back to to playing hockey and, and being fully healthy and, and coming into camp energized and um, you know I, he's he, he's just he's just really excited to play hockey and you can feel that talking to him you can see it on the ice um, you know he's a powerful fast player that um, that that leads with you know that kind of pace and tenacity and so um, you know when someone a veteran player brings that plus you add in that extra motivation extra energy from missing essentially all of last year I think it's um, you know it's someone you'll look to to really really push the the energy of the group do you have an identity that uh, for this team that you well something that you want to define this team and has that changed since you first took over this role I don't think so I think every every team needs to find their way and and there there are so many um, so many new players that that I think that's something that has to be um, you know, collectively discovered as, as we get going, they start gelling, uh, we start playing preseason games and then regular season games. But um, for me, I, 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 the baseline should be that the effort is never, uh, never absent. You know, the, the compete should be there every night. Um, it's, it's, you know, in the NHL, that, that should, that's kind of a low bar to ask, but I want this to be a hardworking team and, and a team that um, never takes a night off and is not, uh, you know, you're, you're coming either to the United Center or we're coming into your your rink on the road and you know it's not going to be an easy game because because we're going to lay it all on the line uh, trying to win. And so, um, but we'll, we'll let them figure that out, that identity and what kind of um, different pieces we add to that. Uh, but I think at our core, we, we just want to be a really, really hard working high compete team. I'm sure you want, uh, you know, you wouldn't turn your nose up at another top five pick, but is there some relief on your side that you're not you don't have to be so focused on the draft and you're starting to think about the here and now and winning games and things like that just after two difficult years. Yeah, from a, you know, a high level macro sense, uh, I feel like we've accumulated so much through the draft and, and young, exciting uh, prospects and assets even moving forward that, um, you know, a lot of what we set out to do when I first took over in terms of acquiring young exciting talent I feel like we've we've got a lot and, and a lot of high-end pieces that we're really excited about and so it's it's more so about developing them and and, and getting them ready for pro hockey or NHL hockey um, so you know fr from that standpoint yes there's there's some relief but you never stop that acquisition um, you know you never stop taking your foot off the gas pedal in terms of trying to find the best young players um, wherever you may be drafting. And so um, there is some relief because I really like what we've accomplished to this point. And now it's about having them all take that next step. But um, yeah, there, there's, there's, some, there's some solace to be taken and, and you know, for our group to be proud of what we've, what we've been able to acquire recently. Based on what we heard the last uh, couple of days and at the end of last year, you mentioned the commitment, the intensity, the practices have been more intense. Was that a problem last season? And if so, was it a personnel issue? Was it coaching? What do you chalk up if, if compete was an issue last season? Why was it an issue? I don't know if it was an issue. We just ran into so many hurdles that we had to overcome. And, and especially when, you know, losing builds and, and things build and you know it's you know after you lose so many games it's it's hard to go out on the ice and skate the players into the ground like it's 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 a hard enough season and, and so you're trying to strike that balance the coaches are in, in terms of motivating but also making sure that the compete level stays higher what have you so um, you know I, I think it's just a fresh start and we just want to start with a high bar and, and, and high standards on, on what we expect from the team um, you know, we're zero and zero right now. And so we might as well hit the ground running high intensity because that's, that's how we want to play. We want to be ready on day one. And so it starts day one in camp and, and really getting ready to make sure that we're not playing catch up uh, when the season starts. And that's not necessarily an indictment on anything that's happened in the past. It's just how we want to start with this group this year. 
You've been fairly active the last couple of trade deadlines, and this year with it being in early March and having half of the month of February gone for the Four Nations face-off, how does that influence or impact your process leading up to a trade deadline with two weeks of eight, four countries competing against each other? Um, I, I don't know if it does. I, I, you know, I think as we sit right now, we don't know what we're going to be looking to do. Um, and so, you know, we've had very active deadlines. Last year was quite inactive. Um, and then I'm not sure how the, you know, um, whether buyers or sellers, how that'll, that, that break in February will impact things. If that'll push activity up earlier or, or, or you know, make the deadline the true kind of frenzy or not. But we'll, we'll figure that out and, and we'll kind of discover what our role within that will be once we get through a, a number of months here. We all silly like the mayor. 